All right, so I'm going to cover today how to work with uh, regression in an approximate kind of way using something called gradient descent. So the first notion that we have to keep in mind for uh, regression is this notion of error. We have, as we have seen, we have a line that will help us to predict values in the future. And we drew this line based on data points that we already had. The data points that we already had is called training data. And the data points that we want to predict in the future, they're called, uh, well, just unseen data because we haven't seen it. So each point to the line, to, from each point to this line, there is a distance. That is the data point to the predicted point or the, um, the, predict the prediction. So, with those data points and with those predictions, if we say the prediction minus the data point squared, right, that's going to be a positive number that's proportional to this distance. If we average those squares with all the data points to the line, we get what's called the error. Now, the idea is we want to minimize this error, this distance between the predicted and the ground truth right? Uh, and like I said, to get positive values, we can minimize the square of this distance, right? And, um, and the total error is the distance from every point, every x to y squared and average, meaning divided by the number of points. So it would be a summation from 1 to n from all, for all the distance squareds divided by n. That's the average. Now, we want to minimize this average. Minimizing the average is basically the same thing as minimizing 1 over 2, so 1 half of the average. It's the same thing. We're going to put this number 2 here because it's going to help us with the math, and we still have to minimize the same function, right? Or, or I mean, we want to get this function to get, you know, to be minimum. Now, this function, as we have um, talked earlier, right, because this is a straight line, right, the equation h of x, right, h of x, is basically uh, a straight line. Whoops, it's actually a straight line. The equation h of x is a straight line, meaning it has the following form. It has a constant that we call theta, 0, plus, and then here, uh, plus, I'm sorry, plus, and then here it has a theta 1, theta 1, x 1, okay? So that's the equation of a straight line. Now, that's h of x. So what we want to find out is this theta 0 and theta 1 that minimize this error function. That is what we're going to do. Now, a little bit of intuition. For this error function, we want to minimize two variables, right? Theta 0 and theta 1. So if we look, if we plot, for example, with the data that we have, if we plot theta 0 and theta 1, right? And then this curve here is going to be the error, right? It's going to look a little bit like this. It's that sort of a quadratic shape. So what we want to put, what we want to find is the theta 0 that basically is, and the theta 1, that's basically at the bottom, right? That create the minimum point in this curve, which is the cost curve or the error curve, okay? So we want to find that. Now, how can we do this? Well, we saw in another video how to do this with matrices uh, using the, the derivative. We're going to use the derivative again. And the notion is that the, the, the derivative of the cost function, right? If we have whatever cost function we have, the derivative is going to give us the slope of the tangent at, you know, a given point. Well, if there's some slope at a certain tangent, that means that I haven't reached the bottom because the, the, the slope at the bottom is zero. So as long as I have a slope in my derivative, I need to reduce, right? I need to keep trying to basically reduce or, or increase the, the thetas. That is the intuition that we're going to use 
to do gradient descent. So the idea about gradient descent is try some values for theta. We're going to try some values. We're going to plug them into uh, the error formula, right? We're going to plug them into, into h of x, right? Because h of x does depend on um, h of x does depend on theta on the thetas theta zero and theta one so we're going to plug it in there do the thing where we subtract the squares uh, where we subtract and we add the squares here and then we add these guys and then we divide by one over n or however many cases that's the average error right so we're going to try some values for theta. We're going to see what we're going to see what the error is, and then we're going to find whether we should increase or decrease theta. And that has to do with the slope, right? So if it's a positive slope, if it's a positive slope, then I'm going to be. That means that I'm going upwards, so I should decrease it. If it's a negative slope, that means that I'm going downwards, right? So I probably should increase thetas, right? So the idea here is that I want to get to the minimum. Knowing that I'm going to increase or decrease the thetas, then I'm going to update the thetas. I'm going to increase them or decrease them by a little bit, right? And then I will repeat this these steps from two on, right, until convergence. What is convergence? Well, convergence is when either the error is not changing much or the thetas are not changing much. I'm not updating them any any significantly, you know, in any significant way. So how do we do this? Well. What we're going to do is we saw in another uh, in another video how to derive how to get the derivative of, of the error function, but suffice to say that we will repeat until convergence the same thing, whatever theta. So we're going to theta zero, theta one, right? It's going to be the value that it had before that theta had before theta zero, theta one had before minus the derivative of the cost function with respect to that theta, with respect to theta zero or theta one, right? Which is going to tell us whether I should add or subtract. And then because this value can be very big, I'm going to add a little multiplier that basically it's called the learning rate. This eta Greek letter is called the learning rate. And it's a value that's going to make this number very small. So I don't go crazy updating my thetas and then Perhaps, you know, if this is the curve and this is my derivative, right? Maybe I'm going to say, okay, I have to subtract a lot. And you, you, you subtract so much that you might end up on the other side of the curve. You, you pass the minimum, right? In order to go little by little, this eta is going to be something like 0.01 or something really small to make the update value small. So again, I'm going to update the thetas, theta 0, theta 1, with the value that it had before minus a multiplier called the learning rate times the derivative of uh, that theta, theta zero or theta one. Now let's let's look at it uh, on, uh, on a little bit more detail, right? So theta zero, for example, will be the old theta zero minus the learning rate times the average, right? One over m, one over m times for every point in my data, I'm going to get the prediction minus the ground truth for that point. Okay, so and for theta one is the same thing, only that I'm going to multiply it by that point. Here, I'm really multiplying by one. That's 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 really what's in here. Okay, so we will do this until convergence, right? And let's do it for what happens if you have multiple thetas, right? The new theta here is going to be theta zero, right? The new theta zero is going to be the old theta zero minus eta, one over m, and then this thing, right? Times, and here, times xi zero. That is one, right? This zero, one, two, these are the columns. So if our data looks like this, we have columns and some uh, some value that we want to predict okay so we have column one 
column two. Right, and these are numbers. Right, and here's a value that I want to predict for each one of them. Well, theta zero, it's going to be some, some mysterious column here that's going to have all ones. Okay, so to update theta zero, I'm going to get the previous theta zero minus the learning rate times one over m of the summation. The equation, the prediction, minus the uh, objective value. Okay, times xi, in this case x, and this is i, is the, is the rows. So xi zero would be this x. x x uh, one zero would be this one. X two zero would be, I'm sorry, X one zero would be this one. X two zero would be this one. X three zero would be this one. How about X I one? Well, X zero one would be this one. X one one would be this one. X two one would be the next one and so on and so forth. So you're gonna repeat this until convergence, okay? So let's say for example, that we have this data. I have regis registrations in the summer and the fall, and I'm going to see if that can predict the registration for the spring. Okay, so I have my function h of x, oops, h of x is going to be, whoops, it's going to be theta zero plus, and this, remember, I have one, two, three variables, two that are variables and the one that I want to predict. So I'm going to have a theta one, theta one, x one or summer, x one, plus, and in this case, I'm going to have another theta here, theta two, times x2 or fall. And this prediction here, basically it's the estimate for the spring. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is let's say I have, let's say all thetas are one. So let's say all thetas are one. What would be the value of h of x in 2012? Well, it would be 1 over here plus 1 times 43 plus 1 times 80, right? And that would give you 123 plus 1, 124, right? That would give you h of x of 124. 124 is way off of 70. Right? It's way off of 70. So we need to update the, the thetas. And the way we will update them is like I was saying here. We'll get first theta zero. We'll put the first theta zero that was one because we decided. So initially it's going to be one minus eta. And one, one regular value for eta is 0 0.01. So you can put something like that. Zero point, whoops, point zero zero one for example that can be the value for eta so it's going to be the all theta zero which is one minus eta times zero point zero uh one over m uh, times zero point zero one times one over m m is the number of of uh of uh training data that you have in this case one two three four data points so one over four and then the summation from one to four of the equation evaluated in the first row, second row, third row, fourth row, right? Minus the ground truth in the first one, second row, third row, and fourth row, times the value for theta zero for the variable that accompanies theta zero on, exam on, on years one, two, three, and four. In this case, theta zero is not here. Theta zero, we always assume one. Let's look at a, a more interesting update here in theta one. The old value of theta 1, which is 1, minus the learning rate, which is 0 0.001, times 1 over m, which is 1 over 4, times the summation from 1 to m of 
all the functions evaluated, right, on the first, the second, the third, and the fourth row, minus the ground truth of the corresponding row, times, and here's the thing, the x, the x value, the first value, which is summer, for rows 1, 2, 3, and 4, respectively. This is summer, right? So values 1, 2, 3, and 4, these are the multipliers. In the same way for the fall, which is theta 2, we're going to have theta 2, which was 1, minus eta times 1 over m, sigma from 1 to 4, because m is 4. All the equations from for all the four rows minus the ground truth for all those rows times the second x, the second variable, the second column for each one of those rows. That would be fall. 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So, and I don't have any more thetas in that example, right? So that will give me new theta values. With those new theta values, I do this again. And again, and again, and again, until thetas aren't changing much. And every, every so often, uh, what would be convenient to do would be compute the error that I'm getting and see if the error is coming down. So that is basically how gradient descent works in an approximation. Now, gradient descent can be expressed in matrix notations. You see, this is, you know, this is the matrix of thetas. This is also a matrix of thetas, right? Now, this is a constant. The eta times 1 over m is a constant. And this summation here, right? This is a matrix of H, right? For all the for all the X's, this is a matrix for all the y, all the I's, and this multiplied by X0, it's kind of multiplying it by the data in some way, say, shape, or form. It turns out that in matrix notation, if I get a matrix H, which is the data times the thetas, then the theta prima uh, theta primes is going to be the all thetas minus uh, eta over m of the data transpose times that matrix H that I define here, whoops, minus the matrix of results. This might be too much to digest, but this makes programming this easier. And here's a little, uh, whoops, here's a little Python program for this, right, where you can get the thetas and then I have just, um, mathematical matrix multiplications to get that, okay? So that is basically how gradient descent works. It works by slowly updating the parameters of my equation, the thetas, so that this equation, h of x, which is what I predict, right? h of x equals, and then equals, and then the different theta, right? So theta, one, theta 0, times 1 plus theta 1 plus times x1, right? Plus theta 2 times x2, whatever, whatever. As many thetas or variables as you want. The idea is that a gradient descent will update these theta values little by little until this function is a good approximation of the training data which I have here. Once that's done, once I have all the thetas, I can plug them in in my equation and I can put whatever enrollment I want in the summer and whatever enrollment I have in the fall in this example, and it will produce a fairly good estimate of the enrollment in the spring if they actually have to do with one another. And that is gradient descent.